was born in a small town in Nebraska. I mean, it was a tiny little Midwestern town, so everyone's a block away. Athletics and sports were big in this town. I mean, if you've ever seen the movie like Hoosiers and all of those where the town really rallies around the football and basketball teams and all that, that was my life growing up. I didn't want to believe I was different than the mainstream. I guess maybe if you went back and looked, perhaps. My parents worked very hard. My dad was a truck driver. He's an open road driver, he loves to do that. And he just drove a lot uh, while I was growing up. Basically, I drove truck for a long, long time. But I try to get home every Saturday, night, Sunday morning. And I'd usually leave again on Tuesday. I never went to college, except for the College of Hard Knocks, if you want to call that college. I remember him saying throughout my entire life, he had the saying he would use over and over again, I will sell pencils on a street corner so that both my kids go to college. Because I didn't want him driving a truck or working, flipping hamburgers at McDonald's or something like that. My mom, she was the one who was most home with us uh, when my dad was out trucking. Probably one of the first family pictures we had. Jeff was probably about two and a half. Look at that head of hair. Oh yeah, I still got it too. Yeah, right. This is the first brand new truck I bought. It was in October of 82. I can't remember anniversaries and birthdays, but I remember the dates I got a brand new truck. And there's, he was out mowing, he mowed yards. Around seven or eight years old when he really started showing an interest in music. He wanted to take piano lessons and he mowed yards for a year, saved a hundred dollars and bought this piano. My family, they weren't uniquely musical, like we had Kenny Rogers' 8-track and things like that. I mean, that, you know, and that would be played, but it wasn't that kind of a musical home. Grandma had a piano in the front room, she called it. It was a room that we rarely got to go in, maybe only on Christmas or something, and the French doors closed it off. Every Christmas, we would get together, and the family would sit in this forbidden room, so to speak. And my Aunt Linda would play the piano, and uh, the whole family would sing Christmas carols together. I just loved doing that. I loved singing with the family, and it's really the only time that the family ever, ever did that. Jeff always seemed interested in music. We would go for walks out on the farm and he would, we would sing just any song that would pop up in our heads as we were walking along. I don't know, we just, we just clicked off together. We, we found a way to, to communicate with each other sometimes more than what I could maybe communicate with my own son. He was always, he was always, um, like he had a set, he had a destination, he had something he had to accomplish. If he gets his mind set on something, it's gonna happen. We're not one of the people that say, well, uh, I, can, I can finish this tomorrow, so I'm gonna quit for today. It's, if I can get it done today, I'm gonna do it today. When we did everything, we did it 100% and did it as perfect as possible or even better than possible and he was brought up that way. I was kind of very the dutiful son. Like I worked really hard to make sure that I was that I was doing something they could be proud of, that I was a good reflection of them as 
as parents. I wanted them to, to not have to shake their heads and wonder where they went wrong. I don't think we probably said that we were proud of him often enough. Uh, I think we supported him. When he took piano lessons, he was going to learn it and learn it good, and he did. Jeff was a dream. <laughs> he just was a dream. I had taught piano for years, and then here comes little Jeff, anxious as he could be. He was riding his bike. He would come down on his bicycle. He was so anxious to play, just so anxious. I've only had two students in all the years that really wanted to play the piano, and Jeff was one. He would practice and practice and practice at home, and I can remember when Melissa, his sister, started taking piano lessons, and they would sit down and play a duet. She would miss a note or be a half a beat off, and Jeff would just slam his keys down and says, you're a half a beat off, and she'd turn around and smile at him and say, yeah, I know. It's, if you can't do it right, we're not going to do it. And he was, he was a perfectionist. If you cannot do it right, I will teach you how to do it, and we will get it right. And they sat down night after night after night playing songs until she made no mistakes. Some of the things that I've taken with me from my family, either directly or indirectly, is this sense of structure, that there is a right way to do things. You should do it right. 